All right, welcome to another episode of Two on and Sun. Hey, I'm Ryan Stick Shalina, and I'm Two on Philip Shalina. We are sitting on a couch right now, as opposed to a table, so we sound laid back. Oh yeah, oh yeah. All right, so Dad, what did we do this weekend? Well, we had we were both at Guru Dan in the Santo Seminar at my school. Your school is. My school is Gamma, the Gelinas Academy of Mixed Martial Arts in Montreal, Canada. Throw a little address up there, Dad. A little address? Oh, yes. Yeah. So, 1121 St. Catherine Street West, just near the corner of Peel Street. All right. Well, anyway, um, instead of getting an interview with Guru Dan, um, he, we, we did something even cooler, in my opinion, because we have two episodes with Guru Dan you can already listen to. Um, that is an interview with Dana Santo. Um, that's Gamma Fighter TV at YouTube.com. And uh, part one and part two, reminding everybody if you have not heard part two yet, listen to part two as well because part two has all this amazing personal stuff about his relationship with Bruce Lee. And the first one is amazing because it talks all about his life. But this time around, what we did was we asked the people what they thought of Dan and Asanto, all the seminar uh, attendees. We asked them uh, some some fun memories of Dan and Asanto, their first impression, where they're from, how far they've come in their training and their distance from their hizza. <laughs> well, we, uh, we've been doing this now for about 27 years, so there are some long-time stories that have been taking place here. We have had some people who have been coming, well, besides myself, of course, who've been there every time. And it's really quite spectacular, the... Uh, the experiences and how people have grown awesome so without further ado here is two days collectively speaking of uh some audience uh well some trainee attendees at the dana santa seminar at gamma montreal 2015 and uh funny enough um one of the seminar attendees is one of the cast members on the flash and i ask him some questions shamelessly about the flash as a, as well as dana santo so stay tuned and enjoy. All right, here's Two on and Sun recording live from Gamma right now. Uh, basically, what's happening today is the Dana Santa seminar is happening, and I'm here with uh, Gamma uh, work alumni uh, Guillaume. And Guillaume, you've been manning the desk here for a couple of years and stuff like that. When a special event like this comes into town and the place gets all filled up with stinkiness, uh, how do you feel about that? I feel uh, I feel great about it, right? Yeah, it's like. Like stinkiness equals cash, <laughs> I suppose. The stinky smell of cash. Yeah, yeah. Cash stinks. Cash. <laughs> Dirty money. That's what it is. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, how's the turnout been today so far this morning? Really good. Very busy. Uh, people are uh, on fire today. Yeah. yeah. On fire? On fire. Well, maybe they should be put out with the sweet soul of Dan and Sando. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I got nothing. That's okay. I talk and words come out of my mouth. I like it. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Hi, Pascal. How are you this evening? I'm fine, thank you. This is, this is for our, um, our blog. We, we have something called Two Han and Son. This is the son. This is my son, Ryan. Hi, son. How do you do? Fine. <laughs> All right, get to the question. Well, no. So, how did you like the... Uh, you've been here half a day. How did you like the seminar this morning? It was great. I had a lot of fun. I always like to try something new. So I'm something new? Is this your first time coming here? First time coming here? No, but first time training here, yeah. Okay, all right. And um, have you uh, been to a Dan Santo seminar previous to this? Nope. Oh, so, what's the first impression? How's it going so far? I like the guy. It's fun. It's interesting. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Awesome so, how many years have you been coming to this, Sean? Um, Since 15, was born. 15, 17 years? 17 years. That's a, that's a long term commitment. That's longer than most marriages. Um, Certainly oh. longer than any of mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, compared to the, the first time you came to a Dana Santa seminar, what were you expecting? Um, I think I just wanted to meet him. Um, what was I expecting? Yeah, I was expecting to be able to follow along, and I was not able to. <laughs> so after 17 years, do you think you've been get, gone a little bit better at this following along thing? Yeah, it took me about 10 years to figure out how to take notes at his seminar pace, and <laughs> now I can take notes. Okay. So I don't know if I follow along perfectly, but I can, I can usually retain some notes. So mm, Noted. Okay. <laughs> okay now, now we're going to speak to uh, Randall Goodwin. Randall Goodwin is a long-time CLAP practitioner. Uh, he's been certified under uh, very many people who are really, really highly noted in the CLAT field. And uh, he's been coming to these seminars too. He's, he's actually been at a lot of seminars, even not here before. So ask away. All right. 
Yes. Yes, Ryan. How are you doing? Uh, so you got to ask. Okay, got to ask. Got to ask. How many years have you been coming to these seminars? Uh, gee, well, I met Guru Dan uh, 33 years, six months, and 20 days ago. 20 days ago? You've been counting the days? How many, yeah. how many, minu- how many minutes there, stalker? Well, let's see. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. About Eastern time or Western time? <laughs> it would have been in the afternoon. <laughs> So, um, the first, tell me about uh, first impressions when you first met him. Well, I, I met him at uh, Paul de Torres's place. And, you know, my first and lasting impression is he's one of the uh, few absolute gentlemen in the martial arts that I personally have more respect for than almost anyone because he uh, shows the best qualities of an individual person in improving themselves and uh, humbleness and all of the things that I think the martial arts should be about but it seldom is about. Yeah. All right, well, thank you very much. Yeah, all right, state your first and last name for the camera and your, uh, and your favorite uh, walks on the beach and stuff, I don't know. Well, my internet name is Mark, Mark Beaumont. <laughs> Beaumont, remember that. All right, and uh, how many years have you been coming to see Dan? Oh, I think I first saw Dan in 2000. Uh, maybe 2001. So let's say 15 years. All right, great. And um, today, how has it been going? Oh, lovely, lovely. I get finally get to take all these little notes and expand on the knowledge and figure out stuff that I just couldn't couldn't fathom before. It's great. Awesome. And um, any funny stories from a Dana Santo seminar that you uh, tell uh, tell amongst a campfire chat? Absolutely. The first time I met him, I shook his hand and I didn't wash my hand for a week. <laughs> Really? <laughs> are, you, are you serious? Yes, I was hoping the osmosis would, you know, just filter the germs into my arm and I'd become more like Bruce Lee or somebody, you know. Awesome. Thanks, Mark. You're welcome. Reporting for uh, me and Dad's Two On Some podcast right now. Uh, where are you guys from? I'm from Fredericton, New Brunswick. And you came all the way here to see Dan? And not only came here, but I drove up here. I drove up here. My goodness. What was your name? Yes, yeah, Rob Dolly. And Rob, are you, are you guys together? Uh, actually, I'm from St. John. John. Yeah, I'm from St. John. Okay. I drove up myself. It took me about 10 hours. About 10 hours? 10 hours. So how many years have you guys been coming to see Dan? Uh, I've uh, been seeing Guru Dan since 1986. 1986. That's quite a commitment. That's longer than uh, a lot of relationships. That's, long, <laughs> that's, uh, that's almost longer than... Uh, well, that's... I want to say it's longer than Aerosmith, but that's a dead lie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're longer than the Arithmetic, so that's that's great. Yeah, yeah. Um, so after all these years, what was your what was your favorite Dan and Santo type memory? Oh man, there's that's a hard one. There's there's so many good ones. I did I did see him one time. We were uh, walking to have lunch, yeah. and uh, there was a dispute across the road where uh, a lady and uh, her husband or whatever they're having a large argument. And before we went into the restaurant, Guru Dan actually stopped and he watched what was going on to make sure that lady was going to be okay. When she finally walked away, they broke up. Then he went into the restaurant. So what a good guy. What a good guy. Do um, you have any stories yourself there? The only thing I can say is uh, I'm always the little guy. I always feel like the little guy. Uh, I've been coming up for like the last 17 years to see him. So the first time I came up, he came up to the, out of the crowd and gave me the hug and said, hello, Danny. That blew me away. It's wonderful, guys. Well, thank you very much. Hey, how you doing? Hey, so what's going on? Not much, not much. Just enjoying a little bit of uh, a seminar with uh, Guru Dan and Nusanto. Always a great pleasure to be a part of. And uh, how, how many years have you been coming to Dan's seminars? Well, this is actually my second one, as it happened, but I've been coming to uh, study here at uh, Gamma for close to 10 years now. Okay. Mm-hmm. So um, the first, second year, like, what, what is the feeling you usually get when you're walking out of a Dan and Nusanto seminar? Uh, first of all, there's so much knowledge that he provides you. The thing is, at first glance, when you start witnessing some of this stuff, it's like, oh my God, how in the world is my brain going to interpret everything that he's actually taught me? But the thing is, as if by magic, when you start thinking about it, at the end of the day, it's like you start remembering everything and it all blends together. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot, man. Oh, and what was your name? What was, say your first and last name, Bob? <laughs> Dan Plumador. All right, thanks. Wait, well, here's Sean again. Sean? Yeah. Um, all right, so what's your favorite uh, Dan Santo memory? The first time, um, the second time I came to a seminar, I was, I was like, I'm going to ask this guy a good question. So I was thinking and thinking about ask a question. He's talking a lot about the history, and I said, Grudan, 
um, can you give me some ideas of which books I should read? And he looked at me and he's like, do you understand the Dewey Decimal System? <laughs> and he proceeded to explain to me how to use the library. So that was kind of the best. Um, it was a, kind of an awesome one. <laughs> awesome, thanks. <laughs> the, and um, if we managed to score an interview with Dan Santo, what question would you like us to ask him now? Well, the funny thing is, is he just answered the one that I, I've been holding on to. All right, then what was it? I, I wanted to know if, if uh, who else had the pads before Bruce Lee was, started them using the pads, but apparently they were retired boxing equipment uh, from, from the pugilistic times. So apparently they were using it then. So... There was, there was my answer. <laughs> All right, thanks, son. And here we have a nice little, uh, he's so small, I think he, what are you, 10 years old? Little Joel, uh, this is your first seminar, right? Hi, I'm learning how to kick butt and take names. <laughs> <laughs> Joel, you're a, you're a road warrior with Dan all the time. If town to town, place to place, like Bon Jovi, you know, <laughs> a cowboy, a steel horse you ride. Most of the time, I'm yeah. <laughs> Anyway, how, how's it going today? You having fun? Having a great time, yep. Getting beat up, I love it. All right. what's, your fav- what's your favorite dance story? And filter yourself. Oh, yeah, uh, oh okay. I got, I got <laughs> serious filters before that goes on. <laughs> Say, what, uh, what you open up there? Uh, I guess I just uh, qualified for apprentice instructor in uh, JKD Jun Fan. Yeah, and here. Very nice. We're capturing a moment on uh, tape, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm speechless, which doesn't work very well for... uh... Never have been people listening been so confused since listening to the moon landing. That's right. That's about right. (laughs) Thank you, Ryan. (laughs) Sir, how did you like it? Ah, It's a very good uh, seminar. Yeah, very good seminar? Well, thanks for coming to Gamma. For sure. You'll come next year? Yeah. Awesome, man. What was your favorite part of today? Huh? What was your favorite part of today? Trapping. Trapping? Yeah. Yeah. All right. What about you? What was your favorite part of the day? Same for me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Right now we're walking around and people are getting pictures taken. There is excitement in the air. It's like for the Comic Con of Jikendo. <laughs> All right. Oh. Say your first and last name. Uh, hello, my name is Peter Morn. And uh, you are you are a member. You're one of those dreamy boys from that uh, Japanese sensation, <laughs> Lucas Teague. <laughs> How did you enjoy the seminar today? Oh, it's amazing. Every time Daniel Santo comes here, uh, I always always love it. Every uh, any fun Daniel Santo memories you care to share with our audience? Uh, fondest memories, just his big huge heart and willing to show like everything he knows if he has the time and sharing all the lovely stories of the history with Bruce Lee. Those are always uh, excellent memories and times of sh- that we share. Oh, nice song. All right. Uh, care to sing me a song? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> too big to sing a song for me? Oh, I recorded an EP in Japan. I'm too good to sing for you a cappella in front of all these strangers. All right, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thank you very much. So far, this broadcast has been an insane sausage fest, so we're going to add some female dynamic to the mix. Oh, and she shakes her head, and she looks terrified. Hey, how did you like the seminar today? It was awesome, as, as usual. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. You're actually listening to a girl. You're the first woman to be on Tuhan and Son. You're breaking borders right now. It was not intentionally as Sausage Fest. But it just so happens that that's just how it worked out. So as the first woman on Tuhan and Son, how many um, seminars have you been to? Uh, four. Four? That's wonderful. And what was your favorite of the four? Uh, this one, actually. Awesome, yeah. yeah. What, what made it your favorite? I uh, had a really good partner, so... <laughs> awesome, awesome. Whoa, what the heck? So you you run the Guru Dan fan club. What's your name? There? Ray McKinnon. Ray McKinnon. It is an uh, honor to have you on Two On Some for the first time and not for the last time. Uh, what is your favorite Dan and Asanto memory? My favorite Dan and Asanto memory was when I went to train with him in California. I was there for two weeks, and I showed up early for one of his classes, and he was doing like a semi-private yoga class, like some sort of jujitsu yoga combination and I went and waited on the side uh, but he invited me onto the mats with about six other people so I had a really great class with about six people just doing yoga 
with the Guru Dan, so that was perfect. It was awesome. And what inspired you to start the Dan and Santa fan club group on Facebook? Uh, just so people show respect for Guru Dan, uh, to post photos of him, maybe some stories, but also to keep it very professional. You know, no politics, just just for the love of Guru Dan. That's simply that's it. Oh, well, thank you for being on the show. Yeah, I appreciate it. All right, now back to the lady. <laughs> You're. Uh, You've been gotten accustomed to being in smelly gyms with stinky guys. How many years did you say it would take to develop this immunity to this disgusting odor? Oh, like maybe like within a few weeks. Oh, yeah? Really, yeah. You get used to it and uh, adapting to my, the male apocalypse. <laughs> but sometimes it's too much, and I'm like, guys, please just take a shower, please. <laughs> Hose off, come on. All right, thanks. Oh my God, it's Kevin. What's going on? Nothing much, man. How you doing? All right. So say your full name for the two on audiences, and they could be like, it's him. Hi. Uh, my name is Kevin Kelsall. Yeah. Um, if you'll remember, Kevin Kelsall was the, uh, the guest on the two on and son episode, and he talked about all his stuntman days and pretty much how you've already, you've already been in scenes with pre-Superman. You've been in pre... Well, you've been in The Punisher yeah. and a whole bunch of stuff. So you're here at the Dan and Santa. How many seminars have you come to of Danny? Uh, I don't know, man. I think um, somewhere around eight, nine, maybe ten. I don't know. I started somewhere in the late nineties. Well, was uh, you have any fun memories of Dan and Asanto and stuff like that? Like any funny stories? Uh, unfortunately, not really. Oh yes, I do actually. I have a funny story because I don't really get to hang out or know him very well. I see him once a year. Um, but I used to, I've trained with uh, Grand Tuan Leo Gahi, and he's another uh, well-known Filipino master and. Guru Dan's another well-known well Filipino master, and both of them are know each other very well and have great respect for each other. But every time I would train with one and then see the other one, they would ask me questions about each other, and I just I remember how Grand Tuan asked me, uh, "Yeah, how's Danny doing? Is he doing good? Is he still in shape?" I said, "Yeah," and he looked at me and said, "Is he balder than I am?" <laughs> and so it was just funny that they don't, they don't really have this competition in their style, but I guess they have this competition on who's going to be older first. Or so I, I don't know. I'm not that old yet, so I don't understand. But I just found that was something, a very uh, human something. You know what I mean? A very real, not a Bruce Lee story, not a martial arts story, just two men that know each other. So I thought that was really cool. My only ah, funny story. Awesome. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. You recorded again. Okay. Stay now. So how do you feel about today's seminar? Well, Joel, I had a great time watching for a couple of minutes before I proceeded to go in my dad's office and watch Constantine. <laughs> nice. Was it a good movie, though? Uh, it, was, it was actually the show. I saw half a pilot, and I said, I might just pursue Joel. <laughs> I, I nice. <laughs> there was angels, there was demons, and in the background I could vaguely hear people go, oh, when Danny would explain something. It, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. So you had a soundtrack to Constantine that was the seminar. Yeah, it was kind of like a commentary I couldn't turn off, actually. Yeah. What are you going to do? Go out and say, girl, be quiet. I'm watching the TV show. <laughs> hey, shut the hell up. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Hey, no cussing here. <laughs> All right, so say your, uh, say your full name. Patrick Sabongi. All right, Patrick Samongi, um, you, you're where are do you reside in Montreal? Uh, I'm originally from Montreal, some of the proudest years of my life. But now uh, I'm living in Vancouver, and I split my time with LA, and I'm back in Montreal for the summer working on the show. Okay. And you also live in Central City as an angry uh, gay captain. But beyond the Flash, you're here for Dan and Asanto today. That's right. So okay. how many seminars have you been to? Uh, this will be my second Dan and Asanto uh, yeah. seminar. Yeah, but it yeah. Was, uh, awesome. And uh, what was your favorite? What was your favorite part today? Like, what makes you look forward to a Dan and Asanto seminar? There's um, what I really uh, value about them is that there's such a wealth of knowledge that you, it's it's like uh, putting water in a sieve. Most of it is going to seep out, but some of it's going to stay. And and uh, because he throws so much at you, and um, you know, at first it start it feels awkward and it feels unfamiliar, but eventually um, you find that groove and you reconnect it to some of the knowledge that was already existing, and then you're able to build on some of the reflexes and instincts that were already there. And, and how much of this knowledge will you apply when you're screaming at Barry Allen next time? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna definitely put him in a wrist lock and <laughs> okay. take him to the ground. Any funny Danny, any fun, uh, Danny, Danny Ilisanto, uh memories from this one or last year? Um, could be about the man, could be about the friends you make. I, I he, you know, he's just such a, such a witty guy, and I, I kind of love all of his football analogies because some of them relate, 
<laughs> some of them you have to, some of them you have to just kind of like you just go with the flow of it. But I just love his little side road anecdotes. And then this time next year, when someone asks you, well, "What's your favorite Daniel Asano memory?" It's like, well, I was at Gamble last year, and the guy's son was interviewing me, and I couldn't just shut the hell up about this fucking show I do. <laughs> Fortunately, we're still on the TV, you know? <laughs> you awesome. All right, well, thank you very much. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Say your full name. My name is Gino Vianco. I'm also known as the Guerrier Modern, the Martin Warrior. All right, all right. And uh, what brings you here today? Just to see Dan and Santo the Man? Did you train? Did you watch? Yes, I have. Uh, yeah, of course, yeah. That, that's Mr. Nisanto that brought me here today. I wanted to see... I. That would be... <clears throat> Exaggerating to say that he's my idol, but Bruce Lee has been my idol for a long, long time when I was a kid. And to know that he was one of his best friends, he's the, probably the, the person that trained the more with him and has a lot of knowledge of Filipino art, Jet Kundo, and, and uh, ground also. So, yeah, I just wanted to just to be in the presence of him and to see him, you know, move, even though he's not 30 years old, he's still moving very well. And, you know, just being in the presence of that person so dedicated, it's really inspiring. All right. So it's the end of day two right now, and you just finished the seminar. How did you feel about this year's seminar? Uh, well, we come to see Guru Dan like every year for the last five or six, and um, it's always an awesome experience. He's just got so much to share, and he knows so much from so many different arts over the years. Like getting basically instructorship in like so many arts, he's just like I don't know what I don't know what you could ask Dan that he wouldn't have an answer for. It. <laughs> you know? All right, well, it's good to hear. Good to hear. Do you have any funny story? So you've been coming for five or six years. Is there any particular incident? Uh, well, and I refer to incident. It should sound like any happy, any happy thought that would make Peter Pan fly when thinking about Dan and Asanto and your experiences. Oh man! Years. Is there any memory? Yeah, well, it's like the last time I. Well, yesterday I was here and uh, they needed somebody for Guru Dan to put wrist locks and stuff on, and uh, I got called up, and so that felt awesome. And like last year, I got asked to like show some Wing Chun, is just like to see who could do it in the in the crowd. And like every time I get asked to do something, and like I'm not terrible at it, it just generally feels good. <laughs> so. All right. Well, thank you very much. Cheers, man. How's it going, guys? What's going on? Hey, wanna wanna give a little comment about the uh, seminar? Uh, very honored to be here for one. Yeah, what's your names? What's Billy, your name, son? Billy Sab, right? Hello, little Billy Sab. John and Emrum. <laughs> okay, and uh, you had a great time. Yeah, awesome. Yep. All right. Looking forward to the next one. Looking forward to the next one. <laughs> All right. Um, what what piece of advice would you give somebody? The next people who uh, meet Dan and Asanto, what advice could you possibly give them if you're coming to a seminar like this? Maybe keep your, your ears wide open, for one. Yeah. <laughs> and then good luck. <laughs> All right, keep your ears wide open and your mouth shut. There you go. All right, thanks. Bye. <laughs> Hello, would you like to give a couple of comments about your experience at this year's seminar? Absolutely. I thought that it was uh, very generous. There was a lot of wisdom and a lot of love in the room. And uh, I couldn't have uh, expected any more. I'm delighted to have been here. And uh, to Dan, uh, Guru Dan and uh, Guru Phil, uh, most, most thanks for all the you know, giving of the collective wisdom. It was wonderful. And, uh, and what's your name and where are you from? My name is Les Davidson, and I'm from Fredericton, New Brunswick, and I train with the Dolly Martial Arts Academy. All right. Well, give a little, I want to give a little shout out to all the people back home uh, listening to this. Well, you know, everybody, this is probably the best physical fitness you could ever have, uh, and you'll have more fun than any other game in the world. So thank you very much. Hey, what's up, young bloods? All right, what's your name and how old are you? I'm Patrick, and I'm 16. Oh, your whole life's ahead of you. All right. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Right around 27 is when the metabolism slows down and your stomach starts to widen. And then, no matter how many crunches you do, the stomach just doesn't seem to go flat again. So you, <laughs> you got a good 12 years before your body starts turning on you. But how did you like your experience at the Dan and Lisanto Seminar 2015? It was really great. Was this your first seminar with him? Yep. All right, uh, first impressions. What, what did you take from it? Like, what were you thinking to yourself when you first got here? I was quite intimidated, so much more people here than I expected. All right, and where are you from? Toronto. Came all the way from Toronto. Well, thank you very much for coming to Gamma, and enjoy the next 12 years. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> What's your name? How old are you, and where are you from? 
I'm John. I'm 16 from Toronto. Another 16-year-old from Toronto. Well, he can tell you all about the life lessons I just and I just uh, gave him. But anyway, how did you feel about this weekend? I uh, felt it was enlightening. It was a good learning experience. I'm glad I came. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming to Montreal. Give your name, ver full name, first of all, for the folks at home. Matthew Poulet. All right, Matthew Poulet. A two on and son old friend yeah. and a Facebook uh, person that when I say, hey, can you ask, what's a question you would like us answered? You actually ask them. Yeah. So anyway, in your hand right now, you're holding a Kung, Inside Kung Fu magazine. What, yeah. when, when was this dated? Two, uh, October 2001. October 2001, which to me is just like, oh, you mean four years ago? But, you know, I'm old and senile, yeah, yeah. and that's much longer. Yeah, um, I've had this for a while. I wanted him to get it signed last time I was here. Like, I wanted him to get it signed like nine years ago, too, but I kept forgetting it at home. <laughs> Amazing. So how many years have you been coming to, Ga uh, coming to see uh, Guru Dan at Gamma? I think this is my only like second time, but I've been coming to Gamma since like 2004. Oh, thank you very much for all your time spent. So it's your second time. What was your favorite time so far? The, I like I liked any time uh, with the Sealat with Dan, the right. Mathalindo Sealat. All right, amazing. Well, um, so um, what's your favorite Dan and the Santo memory besides just getting it signed right now? Because you're waving, you're waving at the magazine as if it has to. Uh, I don't sweat on it, but my, my favorite Dan and Asano is just his, uh, just just who he is, his openness to train and everything like that. His uh, non-closed mind. I, I love say that part. His non-closed mind. Well. This picture of uh, Inside Kung Fu Magazine, he definitely looks like he's not close-minded. Yeah, exactly. And it says to Matt, God bless. Your training. For tra God bless your training. Yeah, yeah. Santa Claus. Yeah, Santa <laughs> no, Dan, Dan and Santa. I got this a long time ago, too. Was okay, what, what are you holding right here? From fall 1997. All right, so what? from fall 1997, it says free voice. This is Dan and Santa's old newsletter that he used to put out all the time. Oh, his old newsletter. Wow. Yeah, so I thought, you know, I like, some people thought it would like, be cool to see it. So I brought it in so some people could read it out. I don't, I don't know how long he came out with these four, but I hear they're pretty rare. Well, so, that's cool. I need to get him to sign that. Well, I, you know, I, just show, I just show him people that. I, as long as I got one, I'm happy. Jeez, go get that sign, Matthew. Maybe. I was just going to give it to him, see if he wanted it. Well, come on. That, that's that's going to be funny. Go go try. On, on the way out, I'll get him. To Let me know how it turns out. All right. All right, Patrick, the angry captain from The Flash. Sorry, day two, I just got asked this question. Your character potentially in like one of these worlds gets killed off. So when you're first reading the script, was there this part of you that was unaware that they would do this time travel stuff and for five minutes until the strip, uh, script was completed, you're like, I just got fired. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. There was that one episode where, um, and I didn't know where it was going, but I get hit by lightning and get knocked out and then another character gets killed. Uh, uh, Carlos's character, um, um, Cisco, gets killed. And once Cisco got killed, that's when I was I was tipped off reading the script. I was like, "No way!" I I, I could see them killing me off and firing me, but everybody loves Cisco. There's you know no what way. the thing I didn't realize I liked Cisco as much until they killed him, and I said, <laughs> "How dare you? Yeah, how are we gonna get by without his one-liners, man? His one-liners kill." Exactly. He's like the. You know, he's good to have that kind of fish out of water aspect. Like, he's the excited person in that universe. Everybody on Arrow is just so pissed off. But, you yeah. know, in, in Flash, everyone's kind of like... And they, they play on that with the All-Star episodes and stuff. I, you know, you, you, you hit the nail on the head there. Arrow's really cool for what it does, and it's really dark, and the action is dope, and it's hard-hitting. But Flash has, like, all that excitement and all that, um, all that action. But there's heart, there's humor... You know, like the, as a cast, we have more of a sense of humor about ourselves, I think. Um, and so it, it really gives the show a different characteristic. It's the same universe, but different world. All right. Well, thank you so much for your words thank again. You. I appreciate it. Cheers, man. All right, Jason, but on and our note. State your full, state your full name. Jason cavalier Leboeuf. Now, Jason, you're a, you're a man of action. You've been in the you've been in the movies. You've been in the shows. You are you're a stuntman extraordinaire. You've been in charge of a lot of this kind of stuff. Now, in real life, taking it to the real taking it to the real life, the mitty gritty, the uh, Earth One, if you will, because we've been talking about uh, nerd stuff for 20 minutes um, <laughs> before pushing record on this. Tell me about your favorite Dan and Asanto experience in real life. Uh, there haven't been too many because I've only seen him twice once was in 1986 was the first time I met him through your dad uh, at Concordia University 
and it was awesome. But I retained maybe two techniques of like the 5,000 that I wish. Yeah, the last 28 years, yeah, don't blame you. Um, the material went, but it was awesome material. And then um, once again was last year. This time I retained a lot more and it's uh, sunk in. No, it's, every time it's great. It's really, uh, and I'll keep coming as long as I can. It's just, I, I pick up a little bit more each time. Right. Well, thanks a lot, Jason. Oh, hey, by the way, want to say something about your experience this weekend? It was the best thing I ever had, but I only did one day. I only did uh, Sunday. Yeah, I noticed there was a lot of people <laughs> when I walked in here today. Yeah. It was more of a Cali day, so the Cali group from Gamma was here today. Uh, yeah, home represent, yo. Oh, yeah, there was about seven of us here. It was good. We all got beat up. It was just nice. <laughs> now, a week off to recuperate. Oh, yeah, my arm is toast. My mother just told me that you've been in the, here since the beginning of the Dana Santo seminar. So what year was that, and what is your name? Oh, my God. My name is Yvon Renault, and that would have been uh, in the early 90s. Early 90s? And <laughs> what was your favorite seminar? What was your favorite seminar that you've been to so far? And today it doesn't count. Of course, today's your favorite one, but we'll, let's, let's think of another one. My favorite uh, camp? was uh, the camp in Syracuse, New York, is where I certified for my uh, instructorship in uh, Muay Thai. Okay, and what was your favorite Dan and Santo seminar? Well, this last one. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Give me something else. You've been coming here for like, uh, you've been coming to these things for like, you know, decades. Come on, there must be some kind of like, what's that memory that you think of that like Peter Pan would use to fly, that happy memory? The first time I saw Guru Dan, uh, He's in intimidating. He's not intimidating, but he is intimidating to me. And I saw him in the washroom, and I said to him, Oh, sir, I said, I've been reading about you since I was 14. And he said, Well, I was a lot younger then. <laughs> I'll never forget that. <laughs> oh, Vic, you got such a cool voice. You got to be on the podcast. All right, Vic. Cool talking, Vic. <laughs> what did you think about this weekend? I enjoyed the seminar. I could only come for one day, but one day was well worth uh, the effort. Just come from Ottawa, so I enjoyed it. Would have come too if I could, but one day, still enjoyed the experience. Great. Not the first time I've seen Guru in Osanto. First time I saw him was 96, and I will continue to see him every, every bit I can. Tell, take us back to 1996 and tell us all about it. <laughs> well, from best thing, you know, from 1996, what I remember that still to this day I remember is... He talked about all the arts that were, even though they seemed different, and whatever the differences were, it didn't matter. He tried to look, he, he drew a bunch of circles that were separate, then he drew a bunch of circles that were overlapping. So I tried to look for the, uh, the overlap or what they have in common instead of what the differences were. So even all that time ago, I still recall what he said. That's very deep. <laughs> all right, thanks. <laughs> and that was it, Dad. Um, I, I think that's a pretty cool episode, a little bit of a departure. Uh, the most people who have ever been on Two On and Sun collectively, all in the span of about, I don't know, 30 minutes or so. Well, it's always wonderful hearing about them. Yeah. It's kind of, yeah, it's kind of like every other member of the Justice League you'd ever see, like, <laughs> Bonnet Man. <laughs> anyway, um, without further ado, uh, have a, yourself a good evening, good luck, uh, or good day, depending on uh, where you're from and when, you, and when you're listening. I'm Ryan Sukjana. And I'm Tuan Philip Jelena. And we are wrapping this gift. <laughs> That's not the catchphrase. <laughs>